Okay, so continuing to uh, get this engine here ready for my Dakota swap, and I wanted to go over just for um, anybody with a older um, TDI engine, just a pretty sweet turbo upgrade. I'm planning on trying out this uh, GTC 1549 as a single turbo on here. And yeah, I just wanted to go over how you would set it up on one of these. Uh, like 97 through 06 engines because it's a pretty sweet upgrade off of like a 2014 TDI. So normally there's a couple of different variations. I believe the US spec of this turbo um, oh, upside down there that GTC 1549 VZ um, it comes with the manifold pre-attached as you can see, it's the the newer 2.0 common rail TDI. Um, but overseas, it came with a flange. And I've already done quite a bit of work to this thing. But the, the European model, I should start out with that one on this guy to bolt to, like I say, that 97 through 06 TDI. It also comes with a three bolt flange, but they're just a little bit different. And so this needs notched out here. I believe a BHW manifold would be about the same. Um, anyway, you basically need an angle grinder to set this thing up and a welder is probably a um, good thing to have too, or at least it simplifies things. So taking out that that one eyelet there gives you the ability to um, slide this guy right on here. And then it's bolted right to your manifold that will let you put it on these older engines here. Um, obviously, I usually just weld these guys. You can just do a block off plate. And then there's also an EGT port here. Um, it's a weird size though. I tried finding an adapter just to my universal um, eighth inch NPT and I kind of gave up. So if you saw there earlier, I already got that thing drilled in. Um, and it's already vacuum controlled. You don't have to hook up this guy. I'm actually going to be converting it to electronic actuator, but it would also be clocked a little different when you first get it, but either side of this can be be clocked there to help you fit it in the car. And then probably one of the biggest pains about this thing is this inlet. Um, as you can see there, I've pretty well heavily modified it. It came with this adapter on there, which you could use. Um, it's like an O-ring seal, and it's got two bolts that go on there just puts it out at this funky angle but you can clamp a hose right to it if you didn't get one of these with it um, an angle grinder again and a lot of time I don't know it wasn't that bad I probably spent 30 45 minutes on it just grinding it down smooth um, and that pretty well sets it up for you there like I say there's not a whole lot else you have to do. Um, the exhaust manifold is different, so that is kind of a downside. But I believe you could probably even modify the stock ALH or BEW downpipe to work, but I'm just going to use a piece of flat steel, cut it out. You could cut it out with an angle grinder, but I'm gonna, I got my plasma cutter I'm going to cut it out with and then weld the downpipe right onto that. It does kind of sit a little cockeyed if you can kind of see that with it sitting level but it's not terrible. Um, definitely could be could be worse um, but if you've checked out the the Chevy videos that's exactly how this thing sits in the Chevy and it's mounted direct so I've got this thing clocked 
kind of backwards a little bit for my electronic actuator because it's going to sit clear over here. But um, in the normal form, this, this can hit your intake manifold. Um, I'll go ahead and mount it on the engine here quick and show you what it would look like there. But we do have it with an ALH manifold on on the Chevy swap and it still clears. I think we did have to cut one one tab off, but overall it makes it pretty slick. And then before I mount it on there probably the um the oil um the oil drain I don't that's kind of a complicated thing for a lot of people but anyway I just take like the stock ALH one so this is off the VNT 15 if you cut the the clamps off you just end up with two pipes and then like even something like O'Reilly sells this power steering oil line so it's rated for oil and that has worked slick for pretty much all my my turbo swaps obviously you could use some better clamps than just the the cheapos there but um, I think the only other issue is the oil feed line obviously you're going to need an, a universal one and like the VNT 15 and even like my bigger 2056 turbos they all use it's an M10 by 1 thread pitch but of course this thing is for whatever reason funny it's one size bigger so it's just completely loose in there. I haven't found a good M12. That's The size is M12 by 1.0. And I actually found a, like a helicoil or like a, um, just a reducer that I'll try to link in the description on this, um, this video. But anyway, you can screw that over the top of this guy. And then that'll screw into the threads of there. And it's a pretty quick fix. And then I use AN fittings after that. But whatever you get for a universal. Like I say, normally it's going to come with this M10 by 1. And then as long as you've got that. And then that adapter, you can screw it right onto there. So anyway, that's about it. I'll show you what it looks like on the engine here. So here it is on the engine. Um... As you can see, I'm about straight on here, so it kind of tips backwards a little bit. But again, we're already running this on the Chevy, and it doesn't have any issues being tipped like that. So it's not a big deal. And in the car, you don't really even get to see them back there in the back. So that kind of shows you how it sets up the exhaust, though. You'll have to kind of redo your, your downpipe off of that. And then... Again, this um, this vacuum actuator, if it's still on there, it's going to be clocked to where it's almost touching the intake. This is a PD-150 intake, but I think the ALH has like a, a mounting point or something that it needs to, or you need to cut that off. Either that or you, can, like I say, this thing clocks on both sides. You can clock it how you want. I've got it turned straight down to head towards the the intercooler on this Dakota but anyway that just kind of shows you how it works there and again that that oil drain goes right down and if you're using that that stock ALH one you'll pretty much have all the fittings be the same I, I did have to do a little grinding on on it to fit right in here but other than that, yeah, you really can pretty easily make this thing a bolt-on turbo. So kind of just wanted to go over that for, for anybody not wanting to buy a brand new $1,000 turbo. These things are all over eBay, especially over in the UK. They'll ship them over here for uh, two to $300 pretty easy. And most of them don't even have that many miles on them. I think this thing had like 60,000 miles on it. And it has zero shaft play. It's like brand new still. So pretty excited to see how this thing works. Because 
Um, I guess I didn't even go over that to start with, but it's pretty much, um, at least Tech Mechtronic says, this thing should be good for 30 pounds of boost, and that's a lot for these, these ALH and even the, the BRM and the BEW. That's a pretty significant turbo upgrade. Um, it should get you over over 200 horsepower. And the crazy part is these things are making making boost at like 13, 1400 RPM. Um, if you've watched some of the Chevy videos, it's pretty crazy how fast these things spool up. They're up to 30 pounds of boost well before 2000 RPM. So they actually need limited on tuning, especially if you've got any kind of other modifications on an ALH. This thing will bend the rods pretty quick without limiting your max boost there, which most of my tunes already have, so pretty good to go. But I think, I don't know, it'd, it'd be a little, a little concerning to just throw this thing on if you've already got a tune for like a VNT-15, but especially just throwing it on as a stock upgrade, um, I don't think you'd have any issues there. And that's pretty sweet because even spending a hundred dollars for a manifold, like a BHW one, um, and then the two three hundred dollar turbo, you're still you can pretty much get this thing going for under five hundred, sometimes under three hundred dollars. Have this thing set up, and that's just a pretty sweet upgrade for well over two hundred horsepower, probably. So yeah. Anyway, just wanted to show you guys that as an option to uh, modify your your older TDIs with one of these newer turbos. So thanks for watching.